Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for VM, VMware Explore 2024. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante. Sanjay is here, Vice President, General Manager of Software, Define Edge Division, Broadcom, another division. But Edge, again, part of the distributed computing architecture. Sanjay, great to see you. Thanks for coming on again. Nice to see you folks again. Yeah, so we've always said, I mean, I said, Dave, I forget what year I said this, 15 years covering VMware and, and Amazon in the cloud. Yeah, the, the, the on-premise is just a big, Cloud, edge, they're all nodes on a network, so the edge is just another node in the network. It has a lot of similarities, but the footprint's different. So all the VCF stuff could move to the edge because it's just not in the cloud, because it's, it's in, in the physical world. Right. This is what we're at. So this is not a stretch to cross that bridge to the edge with the value proposition of VCF. It's been a big part of our narrative on theCUBE Take us through your thoughts on that because this sets the table. Yeah, so the edge always starts off with what can you access from the edge? And as you pointed out, there's many physical locations. Those physical locations tend to be extremely distributed, but they're extremely heterogeneous as well because you could have the edge in a little retail store like a coffee shop in Canada, Tim Hortons, or you could have an edge be an entire manufacturing plant. So all of those locations need to, you need to provide access from those locations to the applications that are sitting in the data center. And that was the first bedrock piece, which was the SD-WAN, the Velo Cloud, which we've augmented by adding Symantec now that we are part of Broadcom. And so you build an entire SASE suite out of it. But it doesn't stop there because, as you pointed out, a lot of the data that is being generated is generated at the endpoints of the enterprise. So if you locate information and compute close to where the endpoints are generating data, then the logical conclusion is that you've got to take a stack and then put it at these edge yeah. locations. And that is what our edge compute stack provides. It's interesting, Dave and I always talk about Tesla's the example, people can relate to Tesla. It's a computer that's on wheels. Exactly. And you're seeing that stack and components come into the cars and other devices. Obviously everyone knows the handheld phone. But this speaks to the evolution of the software-defined edge portfolio that you have. Could you take us through some of the enhancements? Because Gen AI has raised the bar. It's actually forcing people to elevate their game yeah. because of the data value. Yes. Not just storing, but it's got to be high availability and highly available. Yes. I mean, those are two different concepts. You know, you got to have it real time, or near real time. This is a big part. Take us through the portfolio, what's the updates? Yeah, so when you look at the portfolio now, I liken it to a cookie. So stay with me. The bottom layer of the cookie is our VMware Telco Cloud Platform. This is the platform that we sell to telcos so that they can modernize their infrastructure, but very importantly, so that they can monetize services on top. A common service that is becoming available today is fixed wireless access. So fixed wireless access is kind of eating cable's lunch right now. Yep. But fixed wireless access, it's actually quite variable in the bandwidth as well as in the latency. So if there was a system that smoothed out the bandwidth and the latency of fixed wireless access, you know, people would go to it even in more droves than they are today. And so what we do over there is we enhance the fixed wireless access using smarts from the Telco Cloud Platform. So Telco Cloud Platform, the bottom layer of this cookie. If you move all the way to the top layer of the cookie, it's our edge compute stack. That's the stack that you would put on the manufacturing floor, in a retail store, in a clinic, and that stack then helps you run those workloads, including Gen AI workloads yeah. in, uh, on, on the top. The filling in the middle is Velo Cloud. It's a tasty filling, and the reason why it is in the middle and it's a filling is because it not just connects up all of the branches together, but it understands the context of the application and then programs the network underneath. So you have this cookie and what we're doing now is we're telling people, take a bite out of the whole cookie. So deploy the edge compute stack, you have Velo underneath, and then with your telco cloud platform, you have all the intelligence to optimize these Gen AI workloads that are coming. Edge AI is coming. The big tsunami is here. It's so coming. last year, you talked about the vertical nature at the edge. You talk, you talk, I think you talked about you know, retail and manufacturing and you said your job is to work with those lighthouse accounts and then figure out how to horizontalize, if yep. you will, uh, the platform. Is that what you've achieved in the last 12 that months? That is exactly where we are. And you know what made it horizontal I didn't know a year ago. What is making it horizontal now is edge AI because what's happening there is we have now defined the stack so that you can support common workloads. And SLM is a common workload. 
all verticals are going to need SLMs. You have agents, the agentic approach is a horizontal infrastructure. Now you may have a shopper agent, you walk into a store, a supervisory shopping agent will greet you, but then it's got to talk to an SLM that's in the store, another SLM that may be in the next store, and then talk to an LLM as well, with the same ease that it's, that yeah. it's going across. So that horizontal stack that is being produced is right above the compute layer, yeah. and it's the one that is supporting SLMs, and then we have a few other commonly available workloads as well that we want to deploy to the edge. I mean, SLM, small language models, we've been talking about this in the power law that we published over a year and a half ago. The big top of the head of the long tail is the big ones, but the specialty models are important, but also they talk to each other, right? Yes. Horizontal scalability isn't just for SLMs, it's the data. Yep. Data works together, you're starting to see that fusion. So I have to ask you, because you know, edge is clear, no doubt about it, there's no debate here in the cube, we, get a, we agree. What's the differentiation for these edge workloads? Because they look different than traditional workloads in the data center or in the cloud, but there's a lot of data moving back and forth that could be helping SLMs either infer or fine tune or get data at the right place at the right time. Again, this creates the, the 3D picture of, you know, not drifting on the AI models or having hallucinations. This is where it gets really tricky. Talk about the differentiation of the AI workloads at the edge and how they're different and what people are thinking around this. Yeah, you know, the fascinating thing that's happening here is, again, a year ago, or maybe six months ago, we thought large language models, trained once, inference many times. But that's a very simplistic view. We are finding that is not the case. You train once, then you fine tune, and then you, you use RAG so that you keep them updated, you pre-train. So there's a constantly evolving nature of these language models, and the SLMs are particularly the ones that, that modulate much faster, because you're training them with data that's available right there next to them. Now when you look at the nature of traffic that these new AI applications have, it's very different from the traffic that we see today. Yeah. Firstly, it's multimodal. So you're, you're sending a lot of multimodal data from the edge itself upstream. And typically it's upstream, downstream traffic in the other direction. Here the upstream is much more than the downstream traffic, that's number one. Secondly, as you pointed out, these SLMs can talk to one another, but usually they do it in the context of the agentic applications that are sitting in front of them. So that same shopper app, it might, there may be one SLM that is specialized on figuring out shoes. There may be another SLM that's specialized on figuring out suits, or prices, or colors, or fashion. And so you have that supervisory shopping agent talking to a bunch of sub-agents that are back-ended by SLMs, and now you're seeing what you said. A lot of peer-to-peer -peer traffic, yeah. multimodal, not back and forth request response type, and we've got to respond not just with the workloads, but with the network underneath as well. So a lot of, a lot of people talking about agents, but not a lot of people talking, what you just mentioned, about multiple agents working together, where an agent has a specific job to do, is knows the persona, has access to that individual's you know, capabilities, maybe is, is, not maybe, is working in concert with other agents, and then perhaps presenting plans to a human so yes. they can fine tune it, but they're doing a lot of work in the background. Uh, what's interesting is, you're talking about this at the edge, can we envision a step further where you're building a digital representation of your enterprise in near real time, where essentially you've got people and places and things that you're bringing together, whether it's edge, data center, cloud, that informs the state of the business. Um, and what does that look like? How does that change the application stack? Yeah. So, what, when I talk about the edge and edge AI, as I said in the session today, yep. it's actually an extension of the architecture that has been deployed in the private cloud, and as Hawk said, you know, we are back into private. And I was going to say actually like, you know, Kendrick Lamar is not like us, <laughs> we're not like the public cloud. <laughs> <laughs> we're on premise, we're private AI uh, in the data center, but we extend all of that out to the edge. But we absolutely are building a model across the enterprise. This is not just only specific to the edge or only specific to the data center. It's a model across the enterprise and the data is going in these different modes that we cannot predict today, but it's not request response, it's not linear. And that's the cool thing that we're seeing and we're seeing this horizontal infrastructure across these verticals. So the, the, there's some gaps to, to that vision that I just laid out. Uh, today you've got an analytic system of, 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 of of truth, actually, and you've got uh, you know systems of record. They're gen generally, not generally, they're disparate systems. So somehow you've got to connect to those, yeah. and then you've got to bring all that, surface all that data in and harmonize it so that 
as an example, revenue actually means revenue. Doesn't mean bookings, it means revenue. Doesn't mean ARR, or maybe it does. So there's, a, there's a harmonization of that. And that is kind of invention required. And then being able to orchestrate all those agents is new. That's a very valuable piece of the real estate. Where do you play? So we play in the infra, solidly in the infrastructure. So we will be able to support the SLMs. In fact, we have curated three SLMs to run on the edge compute stack. We're measuring today what the impact of doing that is. We're not going to write the foundation models, but we will provide the foundation models running on our stack so that people can make use of them. We will provide the software to run the network and the compute itself. This is all edge-based. And this will link into, as you heard Chris Wolf talk about private AI, this will hook into the VCF foundation that is running in the data center. Now one very important topic that you brought up is the data itself. Because data is coming from such myriad sources from so many places that a data chaining pipeline is essential. But it's not going to be one pipeline for one enterprise or even one, because pipeline implies that it's going from one place to another. It's going all over the place. Yeah. So it's, my belief is that, and this is of course very new, my belief is that the agentic approach is actually going to take over because it makes the most sense for how human beings want their questions to be answered. We ask a high level question, we give it some chain of thought, so we tell it this is how we want you to reason, but then the rest of it, it really breaks down the problem, and each problem will have one agent back-ended by some SLM or LLM, and then the answer comes back together, back to the human. It's a runtime generative solution. It's also um, neural network based. Yes. So the vector embeds, having that data is critical. Yep. Um, so we love the agenda. Dave just wrote a great breaking analysis. Um, it was just published, it was awesome. Um, kind of puts it in context. So we see that coming. The question is, is, we always talk about the IOT edge, which is you got need power and you need connectivity. So could you talk about the, the address the edge connectivity needs, okay? Because you have uh, you know, o, the old OT devices and you have new devices, IP devices. Um, how do you guys do that? Because AI workloads, they don't really care where they run, they just got to run. Yeah. So you have connectivity and you have device dis diversity. Yeah. You have connectivity, your device disparity. You also need to have, of course, the storage. Some of it is ephemeral, some of it, it, it is not. From purely from a connectivity standpoint, the types of connectivity are just going up. It's not like we are shrinking. The only piece that is shrinking is everything runs on IP, yeah. right? So it is the typical hourglass model. You have a huge number of applications, run on IP, and then IP runs on everything. And the everything includes the types of connectivity, connectivity we've been talking about in the wide area fixed wireless access and satellite. But in the local area as well, there's a lot of change happening with connectivity. You have, from an IoT standpoint, the, the kinds of connectivity on the manufacturing floor that will continue, CAN bus, CADA, and all that will all continue. But they translate over into something that's common, which is IP typically on Ethernet, and then we come in. Then we come in with our stack, and then we normalize everything, and then we spray it across and make it run over any wide area network connection, including the really cool LEO satellites that are coming in which can you know, connect you up regardless so that, of where you cookie, are. that cookie, bottom of the cookie, you're comfortable with the connectivity, you can address the connectivity piece on the cookie? Because we have this layer of intelligence on top. Of course, there's got to be some basic level of connectivity. And you know, with, with the advent of fixed wireless access and, the, and satellite, we're getting there. We're absolutely getting there. I got to ask about the role of the edge compute stack because um, Inference is the killer app. It's going to be really important. And you mentioned devices need storage. Those need processing yep. and IP. So for IP and some processing, it could be policy bounded or other restrictions so no one hacks it and loads malware on it and all that good stuff. I mean, light bulbs could have a multi-threaded processor on it yeah. and then run stuff on it. But, but again, there's, there's been advances there. But the role of the stack is coming, you have to have a stack on that device and compute's huge. What's the, what's the innovation there? So Edge Compute Stack is our play over there and it is a pull-based orchestrator. Very important because the same technologies that were used in the data center to orchestrate compute doesn't work out at the edge. Why? Sometimes the network is there, sometimes it's, it isn't. You can't even trust the type of network that you may have. You've got to work autonomously. The type of footprint that you might have at the edge, maybe not a light bulb, but something close to that. We've been able to get some of these stacks to run on really low-end infrastructure. When you throw Edge AI on top of it, even down to one to two tops, you can run some of these models. So the Edge Compute stack brings with it an Edge optimized runtime with a pull-based orchestrator. And this has grown out from VeloCloud. We have an experience of 500, like half a million edges already out there, throwing off five trillion data points every year. 
that experience has taught us how what to build in an Velo Cloud. Stack. We've got some fruit coming off the Velo uh, Velo Cloud tree there. So <laughs> yeah, talk this about is a shiny new toy back then. But no, <laughs> it's now a mature. <laughs> now it's a mature business. No, but this is this is points out some of the unique capabilities that are needed for Gen AI. What are the what are some of the things that you see that are unique to the edge that AI will then do? Great shopping app example. Anything else? Yeah, so I think it's very important for the edge compute stack to be able to ingest data, and that ingestion of data is going to come through either chain of thought or it's going to come through, so long, long context, or it's going to come through a rag pipeline. So that part of it, you know, we are innovating right now, and we're doing it again in the context of individual customers that we can learn from. So last year when I was here, I spoke about what we're yeah. doing in manufacturing with Audi and the like, what I'm doing in retail, now that horizontal infrastructure is coming in place, now the verticalization is moving to the next layer up, is to figure out these data pipelines that will be quenched at the edge itself, you get yeah. the intelligence from it, and then it'll talk in this peer-to-peer -peer manner across the entire network. It, I think it's really, really yeah. cool. The RAG pipeline, the data into the RAG pipeline is fed from anywhere? Yeah, I mean, it's it's actually, on the manufacturing floor, a robot throws off an enormous amount of data. When a car comes back into, like one of these Audi test cars comes back, they've got to get terabytes of information off of the car. That needs to be fed into a rag pipeline as well, because you don't want to take, you cannot afford to take all that data and then send it off all the way back up to the cloud to make your next decision. So I'm it trying has to, to be I'm, quenched I'm, there. I'm trying to envision this world. Okay, now, so once it's there, then an agent can actually operate on it, but it's got to be trusted and governed and secure and have the right access. Um, and so... That's what we were talking about in the earlier segment about you got to take a snapshot of the data, maybe back it up. I mean, it's a lot going on in that little transfer. But there is. Yeah, but then, again, there's, there's a missing piece there, which is that harmonization layer. If you're feeding all these different rag pipelines, and, and, and the data is not the same meaning. So there's a, that's invention required, and that's not you guys. So I'm just, the reason I'm Correct. saying this Correct. is, infrastructure usually leads software, although this time around it hasn't, we need more <laughs> GPUs. But I can see the applications, the intelligent data apps forming. You guys are ahead of the game. You're providing that infrastructure, and that new application stack is going to be built on top of it. You're not, the infrastructure to orchestrate the agents is that is that correct? Yeah, we are the infrastructure or, or to we are the infrastructure to orchestrate workloads. As long as it looks like a workload to us, we orchestrate it. As an example, in the telco cloud platform, that bottom layer of the cookie, we orchestrate the network functions that make 5G work, whether they are from Ericsson or Nokia or whoever. Right at the top layer on the edge on the edge compute stack, we orchestrate the PLC like this, the, the, you know, the programmable logic controller, which is a software workload. Yep. We mm -hmm. orchestrate that workload. So as long as it can be seen by us as a workload, whether container-based or VM-based, we orchestrate. Is a microservice a workload? Absolutely. Okay, so an agent, so the problem with microservices is they're hard-coded, yeah. right, and, they're, and they're brittle, you got to maintain, whereas an agent, it's more flexible, so, it's, so an, an, an agent could be a workload. It could be a workload, okay. absolutely. So in fact, you will orchestrate potentially. That's, yeah, a, that's, that's a really interesting. Yeah, that, so that's an area where there's not enough agentic approaches that have been deployed, right? right? Today there's, there's really, you know, we are developing agents and a framework to develop the agents at the same time. Yeah, yeah, so once good. there's enough of them deployed, yeah. we'll be able to see what is the right boundary. Yeah. Because the infrastructure can, you know, is usually updated not at the speed at the, as the top layer of the applications. And we are never going to be yeah. at that speed. We cannot afford to be. Because the applications need to rely on some infrastructure that is absolutely rock solid. Mm -hmm. right? It is secure, it is solid, it doesn't go yeah. down, there's uptime. So we cannot innovate at the same layer as the applications. Right. Sanjay, you know, it's interesting. From a year since we chatted, a lot's changed. Even now in the AI side, the performance changes are off the charts. Price of tokens are down. Um, Cerebus announced an inference system today we covered on SiliconANGLE. Um, just you're seeing all innovation. Obviously Broadcom's got their chips and you're seeing the combination of these new systems, these the clustered systems we're calling them. They're basically supercomputing. Mm -hmm. Supercomputers, democratized. So love that, that's happening, check. That's going to drive a lot of value on the premises activity or on-prem. So, so I'm expecting at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona this year a significantly different conversation than last year. What are your thoughts about that show coming up as in next year? It's a, it's a ways away, and it's going to be one in the U.S., but the big shows in Barcelona will be there with theCUBE. Yep. What's going to be the conversation there? Because uh, still, you have months, maybe six to eight months from that show. Yep, yep. What's so I think if we can achieve a breakthrough by MWC, it will be using this AI agentic approach to get some new monetizable services. 
because that's where that whole industry is stuck. And we've been talking for, I don't know how many decades about a common API that we'll produce, which will make the applications right to that API not happening. Yeah, and I think the key is the, it's the convergence of an environment that has the interactive, okay, in, uh, integrated and monetizable together. Yeah. That's where it's going. Yeah. That's the digital future. Right, and I think this layer in the middle is the key to solving that problem, a layer that recognizes, understands the application, yeah. doesn't make the application get rewritten because of the network, but translates what the application wants down into the network. And if the network provides more capabilities with it, then we can come up with these new monetizable services. Okay, Char, I mean, we talk about large language models and small language models. I, I, we see them uh, evolving into large action models and, sm and small action models. And, and, and that is the future of intelligent data apps in our view. And I think, yeah. the, I think the traffic patterns too is another good kind of call out because you know usually download and we're uh, we're streaming live so we're we're pushing yeah. upstream we're so yeah. we're uploading in real time that's going to be digitized and we are doing it so you're going to see a lot more traffic going in because the edge is going to need to go in to get stuff yes. highly available data at the edge with high availability data elsewhere yes. I mean most people don't know the difference between those two terms yes. they mean two different things the Tesla has to be real, near real time, then hit the uploading station. Correct. You know, which is, could be a mile marker with some RF, fixed wireless, so you're starting to see the infrastructure really evolve footprint-wise. Yep. That's going to be a big changer. In your opinion, how far is that progress going? Uh, are we there yet? You're starting to see local zones, satellites, fixed wireless has got, you know, Wi-Fi 7's coming, I've interviewed VJ at Broadcom, he sees great bandwidth, new spectrum. What, what's your take on the, yep. the progress of some of that wireless, because cars should be just, up, oh, there's an upload, virtual upload station coming by, just dump it. So the thing is that I think they're not, if you think of charging stations, could they all become storage points for our yeah. data? Right. Maybe, yeah. you know, the cars, as you said, could they become storage points for data? And then the data has to talk to one another. I loved what he said, by the way, you can't have AI without Wi-Fi. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, the <laughs> hierarchy of needs, <laughs> Wi-Fi before food and shelter. <laughs> I guarantee you, nine out of 10 people will say that. Yeah. What they should know, of yeah. course, is that the yeah. Wi-Fi is just local. It's got to connect <laughs> to something <laughs> on the network itself, yeah. right? We're huge wireless fans, you can tell. We're totally <laughs> jacked up on that trend. All right, so we kind of tease the future. In your opinion, that what you're looking at, as you, as you have the 20 mile stare out on the industry, what are you looking at on the horizon? What do you see out there? What are you going to, what are you going to go down, knock down? Uh, and and what, does that, what does that mean to the future yeah. of Edge? So if you just take this conversation we're having, yeah. if it's stretched out to one hour, that would be one million tokens. Those one million tokens we would send up to the cloud and then we would ask it, what's the most interesting part of this conversation? Give me the 20 seconds. That's just this one conversation of a million tokens. Yeah. Now if you could think of everybody's an edge, everywhere that we're sitting off is an edge and it's becoming multimodal. Yeah. So it's no longer this text-based system and that's what is yeah. the, the future, that's, that's what the future is going to bring. Yeah. Everything multimodal, everything upstream so that it yeah. gets, so that it's, it's made intelligent by small language models and large language models that are talking peer to peer with one another. Now, whether you yeah. say that this is AGI or not, no, I don't no, know. I think but, no, but I know <laughs> there's a whole other infrastructure coming on top of that. Like, I, I mean, we tease it out. We believe, and when our business media and analyst relations, all this good stuff we do, data, con the content's data. Mm -hmm. You put that in vectors, it's just math. Yep. So neural network format is yet to be truly done. I mean, neural networks, when, when I went to, got my CS degrees in the 80s, no one knew what it was, no one knew what it could be used for. Yeah. They knew what it was, like, what is this? Now it's gettable, so like, I still think there's going to be a massive conversion to, I don't call it analog digital, digital 0.5 version to digital 1.0 of neural. In that format, RAG pipelines will be ubiquitous, mm -hmm. tokens will be lingua franca mm -hmm. to run software. Yeah. I mean, that's how agents, Dave, your yep. post, nailed it, and I think you know, the work we're doing with the cloud, I mean, we're doing, this conversation is already being transcribed with tokens in the Cube agent cloud. Mm -hmm. We're doing that already, real time. So you're the example of agentic right here. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's the new digital <laughs> media infrastructure. Single agent, yeah, right single now, agent. Single today. Agent. But well, this whole workflow, is coming. no, but this whole workflow will be multi-agent multi, multi -agent, yeah. and there will be supervi yep. supervisory and orchestration well, of that thing, entire workflow. Well, the thing too is uh, to your innovation direction you go on, it's right down the right track because when you think about graph data, knowledge networks uh, and neural networks with embeds, the, it's all graph based. So yep. you can bolt on my friends so we can go, here's the CUBE interview, hit the CUBE community and then start getting people that like the conversation. So you're doing things that you couldn't do 
that was software coded mechanisms that had to be coded. Yes. The coding assistance, that the digital revolution has come. So a shopping app could not only infer what you're looking for, matches the shoes with the pants you just bought and yes. know that your shoes are worn down. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it knows what your friends purchased <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> that's, why I think that, that's why I think the edge is important because you're getting new data. And again, time series data or real time data is valuable, so yeah. yeah. Well, great to have you, Sanjay, always great. Awesome. We could do an hour podcast yeah, on yeah, this. Always great to chat yeah, with yeah, you yeah. guys. <laughs> always fun and uh, super important. I think people really want to know how to design the edge and again, end-to-end -end workloads from device to core. Yep. Yeah, it's the network. Thanks for coming yep. on theCUBE. Yep. All right. Okay, Thank I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We're here getting all the action. We're at the edge of the network right now at VMware Explorer, getting all the data, sharing that with you. Go to thecubeai.com, check it out. You'll see our reg system there, of course, with the video data lake, and of course, thecube.net. If you want to read old school way, go to siliconangle.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>